What's happening, nerds? Today we've got a couple of games that are coming out. You've got Destiny Rise of Iron, you've got Killer Instinct Definitive Edition, a little interesting game called The Bunker, which I thought I would throw in here because it is kind of just a, it's a weird little thing, but it's something that is pretty cool, and it could definitely be revolutionary and a step forward as far as artistic games go, but we'll talk about it more in depth in a minute. And of course, you've got a couple of games hopping the pond, so to speak, where they're going from PlayStation 4 to Xbox One, or or uh, I think Vita to Wii U is the weirdest combination that we have this week. So without Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So kicking things off, we have Destiny Rise of Iron coming to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The wall which stood for centuries along the southern border of old Russia has collapsed, a battle scorched reminder that our enemies still seek to destroy us all. Fallen mutants now scavenge the tombs of the Golden Age, and the plague they have unearthed in the waste is more dangerous than even they understand. Join Lord Saladin, journey into the plague lands, learn the fate of the Iron Lords, and stop the growing threat before it's too late. So now as far as what is actually included with the expansion, Destiny Rise of Iron is the next highlight anticipated expansion to the Destiny universe. It features an all-new cinematic story campaign set within the Plaguelands, a brand new location on Earth. Under the command of Lord Saladin, you will face a new faction of fallen devils, the Splicers, while unraveling the mystery of the Iron Lords. Rise of Iron features new weapons, armor, and gear, as well as a new cooperative three-player strike, a new mode and map for the Crucible competitive multiplayer, and an all-new six-player cooperative raid. Now, like that just said, this is an absolutely enormous expansion that adds weapons, armor, uh, crucible maps, modes, a raid, tons of stuff here, which I think is pretty cool because at this point, Bungie could have easily released three new Destiny games, I would estimate, you know, give or take. However, instead of doing that, they just added more content to the base game and also released several different versions of Destiny uh, as more DLC has come out to kind of bring in new players while also sufficing those people that have been there from the beginning. It's a really good system that I would love to see used by other companies than just Bungie, and I'm sure other people do, but it really should be used more. Now, on on top of all of that fancy stuff that I just read off like three different times, you get the famous Gillahorn, which is back with the Iron Gillahorn, which is pretty much a rocket launcher that was really famous towards the beginning of the launch of Destiny. Uh, I specifically remember whenever it rose to power, so to speak, uh, but you can earn this from an in-game uh, quest raid, whatever you want to call it. It is within the game and able to be earned. Now, there is also a new spare by the name of the Gillerwing, which is supposed to be a play on Gillahorn, which is the famous rocket launcher, and that can only be earned through a pre-order make no mistake about that. Now, it's probably going to be able to be bought somehow later. However, right at launch, you have to pre-order that thing, and since it isn't essential to gameplay where it's not necessarily a weapon, it has no significant boost or anything along those lines, I suppose it's okay. I would be kind of pissed if they included a super powerful rocket launcher with a pre-order, and then they gave you a sparrow just because that wouldn't really make any sense, so at least they're maintaining the balance. So for those that are late to the party and have never played Destiny and they want to get in on the raiding action, the strikes, the crucible maps, the cooperative competitive stuff, I don't really know what's going on. I don't play Destiny that much anymore. In fact, I don't even own a copy. Uh, you can actually pick up Destiny, the collection, which includes the base game and all of the fancy DLCs that have been released to date for the price of a full game. And you are getting a significant amount of content. Like I'm talking, if you get completely and totally engulfed like some streamers have, you can put thousands of hours into this game and still not see everything or at least be entertained all the way through. It's actually pretty impressive. So next up, we've got Killer Instinct Definitive Edition coming to the Xbox One. Are you ready for more Ultra Combos? After three incredible seasons of Killer Instinct on Xbox One and most recently launched for Windows 10, we're excited to announce that we're packing up all of the Killer Instinct goodness into one incredible package, Killer Instinct Definitive Edition, launching in stores and on the Xbox Store on September the 20th. Killer Instinct Definitive Edition is packed full of amazing value for USD $39.99. I'm just reading this verbatim. Fans get all the characters and content of seasons 1, 2, and 3. That means every single one of the 26 characters, including Special Edition Shadow Jago, don't know what that is, and all 20 gorgeous visually upgraded stages with intense stage destruction. Killer Instinct Definitive Edition is a true compilation of everything we've ever released since launch, and uh, including all of the trailers, music, artwork, and some behind-the-scenes footage fans have not yet seen. You're probably not going to watch that, said Ernest Young, executive producer at Microsoft Studios. Uh, 
Yeah. So now all of that to say, this is the final version of Killer Instinct. You have everything they're going to make for this Xbox One version of the game. You've got 26 characters off the stages. Everything is included within this package, which is pretty cool uh, because this kind of release where they released seasons one, two, and three uh, allowed them to make sure the game was completely and totally done before they actually put it out to the public in its final form, which is what's coming out this week. Uh, so all of that being said, pretty cool stuff. It's definitely worth picking up because it's been able to hold its own against Mortal Kombat X and other Mortal Kombat games, and also Street Fighter V. It's remained pretty prevalent on the Xbox One and Windows 10, so that's a pretty cool thing. And of course, it does include the two characters that everyone knows and cares about. Uh, you've got Rash from Battletoads and Arbiter from Halo. So if you're looking for those two, if you're looking for a new fighting game, if you're a fan of Xbox One and you want to try out a new genre, you might want to try this one out, and it's coming out in its final form this week. Next up, we have a game called The Bunker, which is something I haven't heard much about, but it's definitely interesting. Uh, you are John, a boy born in a secret government nuclear bunker in England on the 3rd of July, 1986, the day the bombs fell. 30 years later, everyone you knew and loved has died. You are the last remaining survivor. You exist as best you can, following the rules and sticking to the routine, but when an alarm is triggered, your mind begins to self-destruct. You must venture deeper and deeper into the bunker, discovering long-forgotten zones and uncovering dark and repressed memories that finally reveal the terrible secret of the bunker. So the reason this game is interesting to me is because of what it actually is. It's described as a live action game and you pretty much control a dude that's in this bunker that's gotten trapped since he's the only one left and he follows three simple rules. It's pretty much uh, follow the routine, don't go outside of your like level and don't leave the bunker. Those are pretty much the three main rules and then when an alarm is triggered like the description says he kind of starts to revolt against those and he finds things that he should never have found and it's pretty unnerving. It's supposed to be an emotional experience of the trailer that's playing right here uh, because it is live action because this guy actually exists it's pretty freaking creepy i'm not even gonna lie you should go back and watch this with audio later it's just weird now, it does have a cast full of all-stars that have worked on Assassin's Creed 3, Soma, which is a similar kind of feeling where it's a horror game that was made uh, by a pretty notorious guy in the gaming industry. Uh, people that have worked on The Witcher, Game of Thrones, the TV show, not the game, uh, and The Hobbit. So obviously you've got a lot of pretty significant people working on this thing, and so it's going to be a pretty interesting game overall. So if you're looking for a game that isn't necessarily a game, but it's more of an experience and it's kind of something you watch, this one might be for you. If you're a fan of Telltale games, you might want to check this one out because it's it's kind of like a live action point and click adventure. That's the kind of vibe I was getting from the trailer, uh, but it's unnerving. It looks super realistic. It could be good, and this could definitely be one that wins some artistic awards towards the end of the year if the writing is good, if the uh, cinematography is good, or at least if it's both as good as it looks in the trailer. It looks pretty, pretty decent, actually. So, last but not least, aside from some honorable mentions, we've got Batman the Telltale Series Episode 2, Children of Arkham, which is coming out. Now, the first one came out towards the beginning of August, if I remember correctly, and uh, this is one of Telltale's first games using the new engine. Now, as is customary for Telltale, so now, as is customary for Telltale, there is no actual description for Episode 2 or any of the episodes individually, uh, so I'm not going to therefore read one. However, as you can see through the trailer, the plot is beginning to thicken. You have the introduction of the bad guys, which are, as the Episode 2 title kind of hints at, the Children of Arkham. And so that sounds pretty interesting. It's not something that has been explored before. Uh, so if you're looking to get in on the Batman action-adventure uh, kind of Telltale experience that they are bringing to the table, uh, as always, play these games sequentially. Sequentially, don't watch episode 2, don't watch somebody else stream it, play the Telltale games, or if you want to wait until the end after all of them have come out, all of the episodes have been released, you can pick them all up in one giant bundle, or you can watch a giant Let's Play, it just depends on what kind of gamer you are. So last but not least, we've got some honorable mentions. Firewatch is coming to the Xbox One. Uh, this was originally on the PlayStation 4 and PC, and it's pretty much depressed Park Ranger Simulator 2016. Uh, it was really hyped up before it was released, and then whenever it came out, it just kind of hit the wall and slid down like you threw a meatball in an Italian restaurant. Uh, it didn't stick, so to speak. People didn't like it. Uh, it was still good. It might get nominated for some awards. So if you're looking for that game on the Xbox One, it's finally coming out this week. And aside from that, Severed is coming to 
the Wii U, which was a huge hit on Vita from Drinkbox. I'm surprised it's not coming to the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, but I kind of understand because of the Wii U's hardware. Uh, since the Vita is touchscreen, the game does rely heavily on touchscreen controls. I suppose you could port that to the Wii U with its uh, weird little touchpad easier than you could the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Uh, I'm going to be trying out the Vita version at some point whenever it goes on sale. Sadly enough, this is not one of the games that I actually tried out, but it's one that has been critically acclaimed on the Vita from Drinkbox. So for you guys that have a uh, Wii U out there and no Vita, you can definitely try it out this week. But for those that do have a Vita, definitely play it on the Vita because that's where it was originally intended to be. So there you guys have it. I hope you have enjoyed this edition of The Drop. If you did, drop me a like down below and let me know what new games you are picking up this week. If anything, are you a Wii U owner that has been so hyped about Severed that you absolutely cannot stand it anymore? Are you looking forward to Rise of Iron? Did I actually miss anything? Let me know in the comment section down below and share this video if you did enjoy so that my name can get out there and people can start coming into the channel. We can get a nice little flow of new people coming in. Love those new friends that I can meet. And if you happen to be new to the channel or you've never seen any of my other content, I do upload new stuff like three or four days a week depending on the week. So there's always something new on the channel when you drop by to watch some videos. But as for right now, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.